Hi guys, it's good to see you. This video I make a continuation about hospitals in Lviv. This is the second part. It includes my own personal experience. Where did I disappear? I got sick and I had to use public and private hospital and I can share this experience with you. Also, this video includes rare footage of uh, my sickness, which is rare because people don't usually film themselves during this condition. Also, I got a present from USA. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and uh, throughout the video, I will open this present and at the end, you will see what I did with the present. So what happened to me two weeks ago, I had an attack. Uh, my condition did not exist in Ukraine 10 years ago. People were misdiagnosed. It usually happens to creative, artistic people, sensitive people who had some, maybe a little bit trauma, stress, sudden stress, or maybe they were living through poor conditions. Uh, this disease has a feeling of self-pity, self-abandonment, like nobody cares for you and you'll just end up paralyzed at the fence somewhere. And then just this build up emotions of just helplessness. Uh, this is what I observed by reading forms and reading experiences of other patients. So nine years ago I had uh, one at attack and I had good reasons to have it but this now i didn't really have any reasons to have the attack i'm happy and i tell everybody i live in a fairy tale it happened and i think it's a spiritual actually spiritual attack because you are being attacked in your weak spot and you are sometimes fighting for your life to stand strong in your faith and so you just have to just find jesus find god and find the healing uh, because Nine years ago, I was also on a prayer, I was healed and I accepted this healing in the name of Jesus. So this video will include prayer for people who have this condition at the end. Just to, with this video, I want to uplift and support you, support you as I'm also myself going through recovery. It's not overnight. Um, so basically what's happening is the body, the immune system is attacking its own brain and you lose, mo you lose mobility or you lose your eyesight. Um, it's really scary. For me, I got dizzy, I could not walk, I could not stand, I was throwing up, half of my face become numb and my head was spinning. And noise in your ears and complete helplessness, complete weakness. But I guess when the attack happened, I knew something was really wrong and I just had a feeling of danger and incredible nauseousness and I just wrote on my phone like a text message to God that please help me I think I'm dying the next morning I woke up and I knew I needed to see a doctor I suspected I knew what was happening, so we made an appointment at a private clinic with a neurologist, but I could not even walk to the car, so I asked mom to call 103, the emergency number, and the emergency did not pick up first time, and the second time they dropped the call. Uh, and I'm actually happy because they should attend after more difficult cases, because I think uh, I rely on God that he will take care of me. And mother just forced me to walk into the car. Thanks to God, as long as my head was lying, I was fine, because I was afraid I was, ge I was getting sick in a car. And my mother did not really, she doesn't know how to drive, like we drive to the nearest stop and take the public transport, but she had to drive to all across the town to the doctor. In a private clinic, the doctor saw me. Well, I was sitting in front of her doors. Um, I didn't really tell anybody how sick I was, and they let me walk by myself. They did not let my mother in because of the COVID. They did not want overcrowding. And I was just sitting in front of her office on the floor, getting nauseous in my bag. And when she saw me, she put me on the couch. Uh, I got the love, compassion, and the care that I needed. And really the compassion of your doctor and the nurse really is healing. It has incredible, powerful effect. She knows about this condition, but she was not trained in it because it's like a tertiary level care. She arranged everything for me, MRI, there was no free MRI, but she arranged it for me. The nurse quickly, lovingly took my blood, took, took my labs, 
made sure I do not have COVID, measured my oxygen level. And then after MRI, uh, MRI was really bad. They patted me on my shoulder and um, I was like, what's the result? And nobody would tell me. And this janitor lady pretended like she had to walk my way. She got on the elevator with me because my neurologist was on the third floor. She just, she, I think she was there for me just in case I fall over because I was just standing like this, holding myself in the elevator. I couldn't stand straight. They really did all they could. They did all the diagnostics. And then she referred me to a specialist in this area. But she uh, she told me she was busy. She did not pick up the phone. She told to call her back later. We sent the MRI on her phone. So we waited. She said, I need to do COVID test and wait three days. And then only then she can see me. I really, I think I my condition was emergency, urgent. But I did not worry because my only faith is in God. I, just, I, I know that He will heal me. And I do, want to be, I do not want to be the first one in line to see the doctor, the first one in line in a surgery, because I think that God maybe has a different way of healing me. But then we talked to other people who had this condition. They gave me the phone number of a leading specialist in Lviv. And I got, they got me in quickly. I finished my examination. I did ECG and I did optometrist. And they hospitalized me. So that's my story. I tried to make it quick. Now I will tell you about public hospitals. So again, private hospital was just able to diagnose me and support me on some level, but the treatment has to be in public hospital. This is tertiary level care, very specialized care. Um, basically, they needed to shut down my immune system to stop the immune system from attacking my body. But as the days passed, I was recovering myself. Um, thanks to God, quickly, my nerves were recovering. But uh, Lviv Regional Medical Center, it's like a highly specialized hospital. It has hemodialysis, it has child heart surgery, <laughs> leave. At some point they did transplant surgery. Some specialists are the only ones for entire Western Ukraine. So this hospital has like visitors of entire Western Ukraine. And you can see in what condition of the hospital in what condition the hospital is. And I just know that some suppliers who supply this and other hospitals in Lviv, they are just wealthy. And I think that just money, I don't know, we, I don't know where they go. But I approached the hospital administration about doing a grant project after my attack. And they said, to which bank account will the money go to? Maybe it's misunderstanding. As you walk through inpatient rooms, you see patients and you see that some really, some of them feel abandoned. They do, do, do not see any value in their life. The look of the hospital resonates with that. I want to say, I'm sh I want to say that the administration takes care of the hospital. Um, but I don't, I don't think that it doesn't have money. So some doctors in hospital are good doctors. Uh, others are not. Doctors like to scare you with a scary, like cancer, you have cancer and then you need to buy like 10 pills, um, you need to buy this medicine. Um, so it's it's wrong but they do this, some some of them, not all of them. I don't know, you, it's your luck. May God lead you to the, the good doctor. I had, by the way, I had incredible prayer support uh, group. A lot of people prayed for me. My doctor, she was really good and in her small tiny office i felt such a presence of holy spirit and such a deep peace and i saw faith in her eyes which and compassion which was so helpful for me just the way care is organized ukrainian doctors they are not very good about t t telling you side effects of treatment my room was okay the beds were really nice better than in my house uh, the nurses were great my job was to tell them that they did a good job shot did not hurt the hospitalization took a few hours. We had to walk across the hospital campus and me in this condition I had to walk um, for my name to be entered into the system and for the doctor to do the stamp and then send me back to the neurological department. Uh, that was a little bit uh, sad and exhausting for me. But we made it on time for lunch. They brought the food and they did not have plates. I had to have my own plate. And then mother said, asked me to tell you that you had to pay for your own bed sheets. My room was the best room because it had a sink with warm water. There was no shower. So the girls were washing. You can imagine that they, they're handicapped and they were washing their hair in, in the sink. As 
I was hospitalized, I had to get an IV, so my mother had to run to the pharmacy to get cotton, to had to get band-aids, to get syringes, everything. You had to take, you have, the bathrooms do not have soap, they do not have bathroom toilet paper, you have to have it all with yourself. So, but uh, the room was nice and it was like, I don't know, seven, eight beds. And I think it's important to be hospitalized with other patients unless they are very sick because uh, they will you will dis it's amazing support network go go away go away go away you want to be a superstar you want to be a youtuber there were uh, several uh, two more girls with me and so they told me about how long is the iv it's two hours what are the side effects and every day i learned about new side effect as i experienced it on myself and i did not like it so i actually was pressing myself to stop the treatment so we learn about each other's stories we were able to support each other so what did i do with the sweets i took the chocolates and i brought them to girls my last day before i left the hospital I also printed out British Association of Multiple Sclerosis article about how the damage is done and how the nerves are being repaired because the, the nerves are being repaired only if the attacks happen often then it, the repair is becomes very hard. I gave them some prayer points to pray for your brain, to, for your immune system, just trying to straighten their spirit and fill them with positivity and as I was talking to, to them I realized the doctors did not really inform them about this disease about what's happening and they were just like in the fog I, I wish the doctors would just talk to them or just uh, print out something and this is a very serious and scary condition you just might end up laying in bed paralyzed uh, this is this is this is how brain can get attacked the main the main director of this division, uh, I know that she is brilliant, talented, dedicated woman with a big heart. She wanted to see me because she wanted to enroll me in clinical studies. Um, so she spent like 40 minutes with me, but um, uh, I know she, she tried to tell me. She told me that I'm handicapped and uh, my treatment is very expensive from, from 20,000 to 40,000 euros. Uh, and my only option is clinical trials. Mm, she said, if I have any questions, uh, and she said, this is my experience, this is how it works, this is the only way. And then I had more questions, and she said, basically, you just need to go to medical school to understand. I'm sure she meant well, and she wishes me well. In conclusion, God is your healer, and you just need to pray for him. Uh, for healing and let him take you to the right specialist and give you the right treatment. Trust God that you will be taken care of in Ukraine. But people who have their relatives in hospital, they just go through really tough time. What you need in Ukraine is an assistant who will call the specialist for you, will check the medications, will check where you need to go and will take you there because everything is in Ukrainian and everything is really difficult. You don't always have to be the first one in line for surgery. Maybe God has a different plan for healing you. And don't take the wide path, take the narrow path, because this path leads you to be saved. Let's pray. <laughs> God, to bless every person whose immune system has attacked the brain. I pray that you heal the brain, you heal the central nervous system. I pray that you stop the immune system from, from attacking the brain. Uh, I bless the immune system. And may every cell in the body be blessed and be in its own place doing its own job. I know that your presence is really strong in Ukraine and your hand is extended to heal us. Our life and our bodies are in your hands. Let us feel how much you love us and let us feel your healing spirit. And we cannot rely on anybody but you. Thank you for doctors that you sent us. Thank you for hospitals that we have. But you are our healer and you are our doctor. May everything in our body function well and properly and be its in own place. Give us the love that we need, acceptance. I, I refuse this diagnosis. I refuse this disease. I refuse this handicap. I know your plan for us is to be healthy and to be happy. 
and let us be healed uh, to sh show us your glory, your kindness. These girls in my room, these people who are waiting for drugs, please have mercy on us because nobody else will help us, only you will help us. You are our drug and you are our doctor, please heal us. You will give us your grace. Let us be in your peace always. Amen.